So here's the question. Is Alexa always listening? And who else is listening? There are so many misconceptions about Alexa because I've seen videos say, oh, it only records a command after the wake up word. So it's not clear if Alexa is listening to everything. So the best way to approach this is as a programmer, look at the documentation from Amazon and it's called Amazon Voice Services. And it has all the instructions there for programming an Alexa capable device. Just to show you the disinformation, in, in an article on USA Today, it says that when you ask Alexa, what's the weather today, that it will actually only take the words, what's the weather today, and send that to Amazon. There's another video on YouTube that says Amazon Echo will only record a loop of 60 seconds of the voices or sounds in your house. And then once it detects the wake up word, then it sends it to Amazon with the command. Again, I'm not a misconception because that's not the way the programming works. The way it works is called cloud-based wake up word verification. That's the actual feature that Amazon has which means that the device itself is not capable of determining the wake up word, at least the Alexa Echo is not. The Alexa Echo is a very small computer. It's like a Raspberry Pi. It doesn't have a lot of processing power required to do voice recognition, which requires a lot of CPU and memory. This is why the Alexa Echo can do only simple things. Its, it's main function is to record sound to find sound in its environment, record it, and then save the file and send it over to Amazon. And this is a loop. It just keeps looping this. Every time it hears a sound, it saves the file until the sound cuts off and then sends the file to Amazon. And using the cloud-based wake-up word verification, Amazon will then respond back and say, yep, there's the wake-up word. Or no, there's no wake up word. If there's no wake up word, no other actions needed and the thing just loops again to listening for the next sound. If, if a wake up word is detected, the, the uh, Alexa, the Amazon service will come back and say, yep, there's a wake up word. And then it expects anything following the wake up word to be a command. Or it could actually go into listening mode and wait for the command to follow. Now, because it doesn't know if the command is going to be in that first sound bite or if the command is going to be sent separately after the wake up word, like we say Alexa and then you pause. So it has to send everything because that's the way it works. It, that's the way it's explained in the uh, API or the application programming interface that programmers have to use to link to Alexa. When Amazon detects that there is a wake up word, it will then take the commands and the commands are the same thing as if you typed it on a keyboard and you sent it over to Google, in this case to Amazon, and comes, it comes back with a return result. Now, in, in the case of Alexa Echo, what it does is takes the re return results and then synthesizes it into a voice. And that doesn't take a lot of CPU. And that is then what you hear when you, when you uh, hear Alexa respond. So, so the question is, is Alexa always listening? Well, yes, obviously it has to. There's no other way for this to work. There's no other way for cloud-based, that's why it says cloud-based. Cloud-based wake up word verification, the verification is being done in the cloud. So the, the file has to be sent to the cloud and the actual format is there's a, uh, there's a uh, file you have to send with a payload. The payload is the voice. And then you have to indicate what the wake up word is. And then you send that file to, to Amazon and Amazon will process the file and see if there's a wake up word in it. You can actually use a different wake up word if you're the programmer. So the question now is, 
if the voice files go to Amazon, do they delete the voice files? Well, the answer is no. And in fact, it clearly states that in the end user license agreement that they can keep your voice files for some unspecified length of time. Now, an independent researcher actually compared the different voice recognition programs out there like Siri, Cortana, Google Assistant, and, and, and Alexa Echo, and they determined that the most accurate one as far as sensing what it is that you're trying to say is Alexa Echo, and the worst one was Siri. So the question is, why is Siri performing at a lower level than Alexa Echo? As it turns out, it's because Apple deletes their voice files every six months, or at, after six months, the voice files will be deleted. Whereas at Amazon, they have not deleted the files. Secondly, they, they want to, they have a history of your voice commands at Amazon, so they can actually have some context because they can look back at the history of what you've been saying and, and the AI can then interpret the context based on what you have been doing. In contrast, Siri only takes the last sentence or the last command and doesn't really have any identity as far as, you know, who is the one who spoke that command and does not connect it to a prior command. This is something you can easily test. So clearly, Amazon is saving the voice files. Now, we've already heard about Amazon Echo or Alexa Echo voice files being subpoenaed for in court as a witness in various crimes. So this is already happening now. And Amazon, Amazon clearly states to you that you can go look at your voice command history and delete it if you wish. Okay, now, just so we understand the difference here, there's the voice command history, which is the interpreted command, voice recognized, there's the actual voice files. I, I look at those as two different things. No one said anything about what happens to the voice files and how do we audit to make sure that they're actually deleted. Let's assume that they're not. They're not. They're using it to redevelop their AI and improve it, and they can improve it by keeping the voice file. That's what they say in the end user license agreement. However, this is the question I have for you. So Amazon has created a voice infrastructure for capturing voice for, for most households or many, many households, the majority of households in the, in the United States and combined it with Siri, Cortana, voice, voice assistant from Google. All of this are, are, voice collection mechanisms and they're really surveillance mechanisms the question i have here is is there anyone willing to pay to listen to that well amazon amazon is the one of the largest contractors for the three-letter agencies in fact amazon provides a, a a version of its cloud services isolated and it's just specifically for three-letter agencies what would it take for a three-letter agency to ask Amazon to listen into the, vo the voice files for a fee? They might say, can we, can we listen to the voice files and uh, for a fee, can we do a voice print? Voice printing is something else that I will talk about in a different video. But voice, can, I, can we voice print those people and see who they are and get their identity just from the voice files? And if I were Jeff Bezos and, and a the, the three-letter agencies offered me money with a black budget that no one could see. Uh, I'm not going to say no. I'm going to say, Doc, yeah, bring the money in. Yes. A-OK. -okay. So this infrastructure that he built is, is, is even more important than just saying it gets Amazon sales because they can order directly from Amazon. No, this sucker is listening to you constantly. So the three-letter agencies must love this. And what is so amazing about this technology is it's mostly spying on U.S. citizens. This is not something that spies on some other country. It's inward-focused surveillance. Zuck, duck, people. So I'm not going to have an Alexa zucking echo in my zucking house. I don't know about you, but I think you need to dump that thing and use it for zucking target practice. It's perfect size. Perfect size for a bullseye. Okay, target practice 
for your alexa echo.